G'day Groovers, back again. Sunny's just had her dinner, so she wants me to chase around the house. Bad luck, Sunny, we're live on YouTube. I'll be with you in a little while. <laughs> so we just made over on the Shitty Kitty Kitchen a really yummy spiced carrot soup that gets garnished with lemon and feta and fresh thyme out of the garden. But now we're going to make a Kerala chicken curry, uh, which Kerala is in the southern part of India. Um, it's very quick, very flavoursome. A lot of curries, you have to have them cooking for like hours on end. This is going to be hopefully all done in about 30 minutes. Um, and, yeah, it's a delicious one that you could serve with rice or cauliflower rice if you're into that stuff or even if you just like eating curries on their own, which I do, um, you can just have it as it is. So the first thing we're going to do is a quick marinade of the chicken. Um the recipe does call for thighs, and I generally do cook with thighs when I make a curry, but I just happened to have um, chicken breasts, and this today the whole, all the cooking has been necessity is the mother of invention. I thought I'm going to use breasts rather than buy some thighs. Hey, Deb. Nice bowl. <laughs> this is the stuff I collect, it, the, this style, this design, <laughs> just for future reference if you ever spot any. I don't want no native floral Pyrex. So we're just cutting the chicken breast into um, bite-sized pieces, but like I said, curries, I usually use thighs, but I happened to have chicken breasts. It's about 550 grams, which is... For those of you wanting to know the conversion with breasts, it's two decent sized breasts. How are you, Deb, on this freezing cold Monday night? I couldn't believe there's um, there's snow on the mountain again when I was driving into the little smoke of Sorel earlier on today. I was like, holy shit, no wonder it's so frigging cold. <laughs> I took friends from Adelaide up the mountain on Friday, but there was no snow left. But um, there's snow up there again. Not a lot, but. So we're just going to do like a pretty quick marinade, like, you know, for about 10 minutes um, of your thighs or your breasts, whatever you use. But I'm trying to sort of keep a good rotation happening with things in the freezer and I had defrosted these overnight um and i changed my mind i was like no it's a good night for a curry and i've also made a beautiful pot of soup to get me through not the week but although there's two liters of it but i'll freeze a lot of that one it's a spiced carrot soup that i love some at one of the family gatherings over the weekend i was given half a kilo of homegrown carrots so I was like, oh, I'll make that soup. And as luck would have it, I had a sweet potato that weighed 500 grams, which filled up the kilo. But if you do try that recipe, do the recipe just with carrots. Not that the sweet potato ruined it, but it's a really light, yummy, spicy soup. Um, it's a good all-year rounder. It is brr. I hope you're nice and cosy. In your little house. Hey, Mandy, good to see you, gorgeous. So, yeah, we're going to do like a quick little 10 minute uh, marinade of the chicken. So, first, we want to season with salt and pepper. And then we're going to add to that um, a teaspoon of red chilli powder. And I just want to show off my cute jars with the cute stickers. I was live before just on the Shitty Kitty Kitchen and lovely Michelle P, who I haven't seen for ages, she came in and chatted. Joey popped in really quickly and said hi. But, yeah, it was just the two of us for like an hour. <laughs> so I don't think people have quite fully realised yet that 
well, that I'm going to hopefully be doing um, just the shitty kitty kitchen for cooking from now on, but I might have to wait a little bit longer. Um, it's considered flavoursome and succulent, a delicious blend of spices and a rich coconut gravy. I haven't made it before, but I'll let you know when we do the taste test. I'll give it a heat score. Uh, next up, ground coriander. We're going to put two teaspoons of that in. Or if you've got coriander seed, grind them up. Um, and then I just used up my um, ginger paste before when we were cooking the soup so I'm actually going to put um, some ground ginger I don't have any fresh ginger I forgot to buy fresh ginger um, but we also need um, some garlic as well so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put three teaspoons of ginger And I also forgot to buy fresh garlic, but luckily I have emergency garlic paste in the fridge um, and about three teaspoons worth of that. <laughs> That's good guesstimating. And then we'll just mix that all together and let it marinate, not even for 10 minutes. The recipe says just a few minutes, so... Just try and cover all the chicken pieces and let all those spices. But, yeah, this is a really speedy curry, and I haven't made it before. Like, I, I do like just trying things for the first time live, which makes for sometimes for disasters and entertainment, and other times we're all like, holy shit, that's amazing. So, but, yeah, oh, it smells incredible. Yum. I'm already loving the smell of it. it. It doesn't smell chilli hot yet, and there will be a green chilli going in later, but um, that's pretty well coated. I wish you could smell it. Oh, it's yummy. It, it is very fragrant. So that can just sit there for a couple of minutes. Slippy McSlappy, hey, Mum. How you doing, Groover? Nice to see you. Yeah, bottled. I'd never got into garlic paste in my life until, um, was it COVID or maybe one of our self-ISOs? And I was like, holy shit, garlic paste, ginger paste, lemongrass paste. So I bought a heap of them. And the same with the little packets of the semi-dried herbs, not the completely dried ones, the little semi-dried. Um, and I've always got all of that in my fridge as a little emergency. But to be honest, the last time I used garlic, I'd bought a um, bulb and I'd only used like two cloves and the whole thing was like in the into the compost it went. You make garlic and ginger paste and refrigerate it. Okay, so if you were doing this recipe, you would put two tablespoons of your garlic ginger paste into this recipe. So now I'm going to get the... Um, there are my ingredients over there. That's not me having a cluttered bench. I'm being organised and all my ingredients are sitting over there. But I'm going to put the um, stovetop on. And because I'm using a big heavy cast iron Le Creuset, um, you only ever, I like think it says to go high heat with these. Don't go much over um, medium because the it takes a bit longer for the cast iron to heat up. I probably should have whacked that on at the start. But when it does, um, at a medium, that's kind of the equivalent of having a, a saucepan at high. You don't want to mess with the enamel. There's a piece of sunny fluff floating around, little garnish. But, yeah, so three. The, um, by the way, the link to this recipe is in the description. So if it does um, if it does go down a treat, then check out the link. All right, so we're going to put some coconut oil. It's one of the things I love about, I mean, I love coconut oil anyway, but I love making curries, always cook it in coconut oil. Yum. 
And you want to put about two tablespoons of coconut oil into your heavy based saucepan or frying pan or wok, whatever you're using. I'm just guesstimating. And when you've got leftover coconut oil on your spoon, rub it around your gums. It's really good for your teeth. I'm not going to start doing that. What's it called? Pulling. But, yeah, rub coconut oil onto your gums. It's good for them. Pull it into your skin as a moisturiser. Just put a few things away. Because um, I've still got to clean up all the soup shit too. Loving my little... Spice basket, by the way, groomers. A life changer. Oh, you love coke? I love coconut too. When Jim and I lived in Vietnam, our medicine cabinet was, I swear to God, it was a jar of coconut oil and a jar of tiger balm. And we found we could fix, you know, like scratches and insect bites and things like that or sore muscles. Um, also, coconut oil, you wouldn't think this, but it's actually a really good sunblock. Like in Vietnam, we use that on our skin and I wasn't convinced. I thought that my arms, you know, my skin would burn with coconut oil. So one day I did one arm in coconut oil and one without and the one without got burnt and the one with coconut oil didn't. I've got a fantastic... Um, book about all the uses for coconut oil and yeah it's pretty incredible stuff so we're just melting the coconut oil at the moment and once it gets hot we're going to add um bay leaves and a cinnamon stick even my cinnamon stick tub has a matchy matchy sticker yeah you would think it would burn but no and these are bay leaves from my sister's old place in lauderdale tasmania she had a beautiful bay tree and picked a heap of bay leaves before they when they sold their house and i will cry when this jar is empty because there there's nothing better really so we're going to get one oh sorry two bay leaves two bay leaves And we're also going to get a cinnamon stick. And these are going straight into the pan. Don't really need that little dish. So, yeah, chuck them straight into your pan. And... Give them a bit of a stir in the coconut oil. It's a really good way to gauge if your coconut oil is getting nice and hot. But also it's a good little flavour release at the start. Get much closer. That's probably as close as we can get. That's starting to sizzle. So the next thing we're going to add is a green pepper. We've already put red pepper in the marinating chicken mix, but we're going to add a green pepper. Now, I love green peppers. I don't find them too hot. Um, and I'm literally going to put, I'm just going to thinly slice it. Seeds and all are going to go into the curry. But you do what suits you. It's actually the pith of the curry that is the really hot bit, not the seeds, um, just so you know. So if you really don't like spicy hot chilli or curries, then you can cut out the, you can get rid of all the seeds and also that pith, the little white bit in the middle, that's actually where the heat is. But um, I don't find green chilies to be crazy hot, so I'm chucking everything in. But, yeah, you do you. 
I like a hot curry too. The pan, isn't it stunning? Yeah, it's a gorgeous blue. So, yeah, um, chili seeds, everything's going in, and we've definitely got some heat happening now. So give that a good little stir. And then we're going to chuck the chicken in. And we're going to get this uh, cooking. Good lookings. Oh, it smells amazing. And this is not a curry that needs to sit. If you're driving home from work and you're like, God, I feel like curry for dinner, but I don't have three hours for it to slow cook on the stovetop, this is a 30-minute curry. Got to love that. So while this is cooking, we want it to get a little bit of colour. We don't want it, like, super browned, but we do want to cook it so it gets a bit of colour. Oh, my God, I wish you could smell my house far out. We're going to get the next couple of ingredients prepped while that's cooking. So we need a couple of onions. I am if he's going to put a tiny bit more coconut oil in there. So, yeah, let the chicken cook and get some colour happening. But in the meantime, a couple of onions. Now, with me and my curries, I never, ever, 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 ever finely chop onion. Wedges, baby. Go the wedges because there's nothing better than chunky bits of onion. And you think about it when you go and have Chinese, they do lemon, um, lemon, they do onion wedges as well. So, yeah. And plus these are being added later, not at the start. So you're going to get these yummy onion wedges. Is that for a sec? Put this over in the compost bowl. Okay. So, yeah, um, just give the chicken a bit of a... I cannot tell you how amazing this smells. Oh, my God. It smells... The cinnamon stick is just... Throwing flavour all over the place. It's unbelievable. And it's really pretty too. I'll show it to you in a minute. So, yeah, wedge wedge your onions. None of this finely chopped shit. And I mean, I'm not doing crazy big chunky wedges. Like I'm cutting the onion into eighths. So we're getting this sort of size and shape. Delicious. Delicious. And the other ingredient, we're going to add mushrooms. Now, the recipe says use 100 grams. I just happen to have 200 grams in a punnet. I have no other need for mushrooms this week, so I'm chucking them all in. It'll make the um, the curry go a bit further, and I'm going to, for the most part, put them in whole. I just take the um, the raw ends off. And if it's a slightly big mushroom, I'll slice it in half. So, you know, this sort of size, carve it. Other ones can be whole. They're little baby button mushrooms.
My house smells like porn. Have a look at this. It's so yummy. Oh, my God. Guys, you have to make this just from the aroma alone. Keep an eye on it. Keep moving it around. You don't want it to be, um, you know, cooked so that it's like fried within an inch of its life. But as soon as it's got a bit of colour, that's when we're going to add, oops, mushroom, suicide, no 30-second rule. I have a cat and there will be hair. Even if I had literally vacuumed and mopped the kitchen floor right before I went live, there will still be sunny fluff. It's like it just floats around in the air in this house. Not mountains of it, don't go, you gross, but, you know. Dogs or cats, there's always garnishes. <laughs> it's kind of hard to tell if the chicken is getting some colour or not because of all the yummy spices that it's been marinated in very briefly, but I can see, still see a few pieces that are a tiny bit raw. It's going to simmer on the stove top for a little while, but... That's going to be my gauge is if I can't see any raw chicken. But, oh, my God, that aroma. Now, Deb, I saw your message about Jance on the boat soon. Bring it on, girl. I'm there. You look like you're at home sitting on your boat. So congrats again. More stuff for the compost. Um, so, yeah, I'm pretty happy with where that is now. I think it's had a good little run. Just going to wipe that down. Clean as you go, Groovers, clean as you go. Although you should see my sink area. There is much work to be done. All right, back onto the pan. So now we're going to chuck the onion and the mushrooms into the pan as well. And we want to give that a good stir. Mix it all together. You want all those beautiful flavours and the chilli. Now just remember if you make this, when you're serving it up, remove the bay leaves and the cinnamon stick because if someone chomps on one of those two things they're going to be like wow ow, that was a bit much but i'm just basically giving it a good mix this smells unbelievable i am stoked that i'm making this holy shit So we've stirred it pretty well just to combine everything. And then what we need to do is just keep a little eye on it. And when the mushrooms start to release their, um, oh, Deb, this is, that bloody bowl is still on board. It's, <laughs> it's meant, you're meant to have the ugly bowl, Deb. I'll be disappointed if you don't serve chips or something in it. <laughs> Not hot chips, you know, just like a packet of chips. I think it belongs there. The fact that it got left behind. I'm just going to give you an update on what this looks like. It's unbelievable. And the flavours, oh, my God. And the colours are not, the camera doesn't do it justice. It's got a lot more colour happening. But what we want to make sure is we keep an eye on it. So when the mushrooms start to release, this recipe very politely refers to it as their juice. But I'm going to say they're jizz. So once you start to see a little bit of mushroom jizz, <laughs> it's really just water. We're going to whack in a tin of coconut, coconut cream. Now the recipe asks for 425 mils and these cans are 400 mils. But as luck would have it, 
I've still got some coconut cream from an avocado and spinach smoothie I made the other day, like only a day or two ago. So we're using up stuff in the fridge. I usually put stickers on on the coconut milk to tell me how you know what date to use it by, but I only had the smoothie yesterday. So always give your coconut cream and coconut milk a good shake. To be honest, I can't really tell if the mushrooms are releasing their jizz or not. But it's all looking, it, yeah, it look, does look, oh, good. The colours are much prettier in the flesh than on the YouTubes. But I'm going to say they're releasing their juice, so I'm going to chuck the coconut cream in. I love having a little bit of leftover stuff that gets used up. For some reason, that's just like, you know, cool to me. <laughs> Every last drop of you delicious coconut milk. And then we're going to add the can as well. Let me just get the lid off. Get that yummy blob off the lid too. You tip things out? Ah, oh, Deb. You're extravagant. I don't. I mean, if it was only a teaspoon or whatever, I'd just use, I'd just chuck the whole thing in. I'd rather use it. But when, I mean, that was like, you know, about 100 mils. So I'll keep that. And I use a lot of coconut milk and coconut cream and coconut oil. I do a lot of Asian cooking, so... It always gets used up, and if not, I just whack it um, into a smoothie. So we're going to bring this to the boil, and we want it to simmer for five or six minutes to let the onion soften. That's really the only thing left, and also for all of the flavours um, to infuse. Um, but the last ingredient uh, curry leaves and you need about 20 of them and these were ones that I bought and didn't use them all so I froze them I freeze lots of herbs but yeah 20 leaves so I'm going to add 20 curry leaves and then I'm going to chuck what's left back into the freezer one two three four wah -ha -ha. five six seven eight nine ten 11, 12, I'm going to be 20 precisely, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 20 curry leaves. Now, if you take your herbs out and they defrost, but curry leaves are quite sort of robust, they can go back in the freezer. It's not like pulling meat out of the freezer, defrosting it and then refreezing it. But whenever you've got herbs um, left over, chuck them in the freezer. They freeze really well. And they're so expensive. Like I grow a lot of herbs. I was I put my beautiful fresh um, thyme out of my garden into the soup earlier and there's nothing better. I mean, I had homegrown carrots in it as well, not me. Family members grew some carrots and they were giving away bunches of carrots at this family gathering yesterday. So here's a little update on what it look, looks like. It's really yummy, especially with the curry leaves, adding a bit of greenery. And we want to get it up to the boil and then want it to simmer for about five, six minutes and that will just let the onion soften. And that's pretty much it, Groovers. 
I'm going to chop up some coriander. Our little supermarkets, you can buy um, herbs in pots and I usually have, I mean, I, I get a nice little pot from here and stick this pot inside. I've found, I've tried repotting these herbs so many times and they're never as happy as when they're in their own ones. So I just, I've got a couple of cute little pots and I usually have fresh basil and fresh coriander because coriander just, I, it always goes to seed. Um, for me but we're just gonna cut up some coriander where my kitchen scissors have gone so I'm just gonna slice a bit off coconut oil is supposed to be good for your memory all right, so it's come to the boil. I'm just going to chuck it down so that it sits on a nice little simmer. You don't want to burn it. Um, I don't know if I've ever made a Kerala uh, curry before, but I'm loving it so far and it smells incredible. Now, coriander, a very polarising herb. I cannot stand it when it's leaf form like that. Texturally, it makes me want to puke. But if I chop this stuff finely, and this is the only thing I chop really finely, it turns into a completely different herb and I absolutely love it. So people who say I hate coriander, if you haven't tried it finely chopped, give it a go because it is a completely different experience. I learned that when I lived in Vietnam. We went to a cooking school and um, it was a Swiss man and a Thai woman, funny enough, who ran this cooking school. And so she did a lot of Thai cooking, obviously. And we were chatting about coriander and I was saying how I couldn't stand it. And she said, if people put it on like a garnish like you do with parsley and just put the whole leaves on, you're never going to like it. And she taught me to finally chop it. And honestly, it it's a completely different experience. Yeah, the coconut book I've got goes through a lot of different things. I mean, when I say finally like that, sort of chop, 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 choppity chop. And I'll be doing a little taste test in a few minutes. Um, but, yeah, there's a lot of um, really good information out there about how good coconut oil is for you. Obviously the big um, cooking oil companies don't want people to know how great coconut oil is and they've gone out of their way to do a lot of bad PR for them. But um, I seriously was at my thinnest and healthiest when I lived in Vietnam and we were dousing ourselves inside and out with coconut on the daily, coconut oil. Um, I'm starting to tidy up just for a few minutes while the curry simmers. And to be honest, I don't mind if the onion's a little bit hard still. Like, I don't need it to be super cooked. There's a bit of the cooking action over in the background. You should see my kitchen, like... I'm trying to do a tiny bit of cleaning up as we go, but unless I actually start doing the dishes, there's not much more I can do. I've pretty much put everything away, though, at least. I should not keep that out. Uh. I 
It does make a big difference if you clean as you go. I well, I've, the dishwasher saga. I can't go there again. <laughs> um, I wanted a dish like a drawer. My joinery isn't big enough to house it, even though I've got all the plumbing and everything already in my island bench for a dishwasher. So I'd have to completely pull apart my island bench, which I don't want to do because it's got a like it's got a bespoke poured concrete top on it. And then on the other side, if I do, if I put it on this side, like the, the stove side, um, I'd have to pull apart the joinery and also put a massive hole in the wall and pull all the plumbing through from the bathroom. So now I'm looking at freestanding ones, which means it'll go at the end of my bench and that's going to turn my kitchen from having an island bench that you can walk around fully. It'll turn my kitchen into a galley, which I don't really mind. Um, but I'm either going to have to extend the joinery to enclose it because so far all the freestandings I'm looking at, they're not aesthetically pleasing to me, the backs of them, which will be visible to people from my living room. So that's the dishwasher saga, Deb, and until I find a dishwasher that's got a cute ass that I can handle having at the end of my kitchen bench, I do not own a dishwasher. And then friends of mine were showing me like bench top ones, but they're only really good for plates and glasses and I don't mind di doing those dishes. And then pots like these I have to do by hand anyway. So at the end of the day, like, I don't know, I've done the dishes. I've only ever had one house. I had a rental house that had a dishwasher in it. Um, I've never actually owned a dishwasher. And, you know, I, if I have dinner parties and stuff, I quite like doing the dishes and chatting to everyone. I've got an open plan living dining kitchen area. Um, and when people come here, they often help me. Like it's lovely to have, you know, a spare pair of hands. But, yeah, that's the story of me and dishwashers. I reckon she's good to go. I gave the soup I made earlier a 10 out of 10. So here's the finished product. It's very, very saucy, like it's not a thickened um, sauce. So if you made some rice, that would absorb it, obviously, or cauliflower rice, or you can just literally eat bowls of curry without rice at all. I personally love rice. But just for a little taste test. Oh, it was nice. <laughs> that was one of my hairs. How revolting. <laughs> it was attached to one of the curry leaves. I'm hoping that that was just from when I was just pulling it out then and it hasn't been, look, it's me. I'm the only one eating this. So, yeah, talked about Sonny's hair and then I found a hair of mine that's revolting. But this is real life cooking in the kitchen, Groovers. I'm definitely going to let you know. I'm also putting a bit of extra salt and pepper on because that's just what I do. I'm all about the seasoning. And... Here we go. I'm going to dig in. This is just a little tasting bowl minus my hair. <laughs> it's pretty hot. I'm just going to let it cool down a sec. And I'll, I'll do a spice rating. I mean, I like, I like hot curries, but I don't like blow your tits off. It's unpleasant to eat. Like, I do have a limit, so this will be a very fair assessment. 
and ten is blow your tits off. One is, you know, hardly any heat. But of course, as always, too with the curry, they really are yummiest when they're a day old. Once I've had a chance for all the flavors to sink in, but. Mm. Yeah, lucky here. <laughs> um, it's pretty mild. I'll probably give it a, I'm going to say a five for me, but it might be a six for some people, but it really is like mid. It's probably even, it's not to the lower end. It's got really good flavour. Like the flavour is incredible. It's very robust. Um, let me try a mushroom. Oh my god, it's so good though. Mm. Yeah, look. There's another piece of chicken. I'll try a mushroom now. That is so beautiful. It's got so many flavours. It definitely has my, my tongue is tingling. Um, so I'd put it at five for me, but maybe six. But my tongue is tingling. And that's the green chilli where I put the pith and the seeds and everything in. But it's not like a vindaloo or anything crazy. It's really yummy, though. It's got beautiful flavours. Um, on a bed of rice, bed of cauliflower rice, absolutely delicious. Or sometimes I do like I just pan fry some zucchini and some butter and have like some zucchini with it. Um, but you can really do whatever you want with it. But it, no, that's really yummy. But I wouldn't call that like it's not blow your tits off, but it's also not lacking spice. It's got a good, robust, great flavors. Um, yeah, it's divine. And I will give it a 10 out of 10 as well in terms of the quality of the dish it's it's really yummy and so easy guys like I've been live for 42 minutes you seriously could get home and have this on your table in half an hour I had a bit of faffing around and I was cleaning up as I went and whatever but well Mandy <coughs> pardon me because I'm not coughing um because it's too hot um I'd leave the green if you don't like it really hot you could leave the red chilli powder out of the marinade and leave the green chilli out. But if you like a little bit of spice, maybe do the green chilli and just take out the pith and the seeds. I mean, it's definitely got a punch, It's but it's not like crazy. But if you're not a fan of spice, I, there are little ways you could tone it down a bit. And it would literally be just taking the chilli out. Or, well, you know, do a quarter of a teaspoon of red chilli powder and do half a green chilli or just do the green chilli. Oh, Deb, you have to. This is the sort of thing that you should make a batch of it and take it on the boat with you. Yum. Really yummy. But thanks, Groovers. That's two 10 out of 10 dishes on a Monday afternoon. I'm going to log off and actually have a proper bowl of this for dinner. Proper bowl of this. And um, I've got soup as well for lunches and if I don't feel like cooking when I get home from work. So, yeah, there's two new recipes now in the Shitty Kitty Kitchen, the Kerala Chicken Curry with Coconut Cream and the Spiced Carrot Soup that you serve with feta and lemon. But, yeah, let me know how you feel. If you have a go, put a comment under the video and let me know what you think. But, yeah, Mandy, I just take some of the spice out. Like it's it's the perfect level of spice for me the more I'm having of it. 
I could probably take it up to a seven or even an eight, but I definitely, this would probably be a six. Mm. No, I'm going to call this a seven for heat now and a 10 out of 10 for flavour. It's really yummy, super quick, half an hour. It would be on your table and it's an absolute crowd pleaser. If you've got kids, take the chilli out. And if you love a bit of spice, leave the seeds in the pit and blow your tits off. <laughs> Thanks for hanging out, Groovers. Have a lovely night, everyone. I'm back at work tomorrow. Um, so I might do a little drive live in the morning back into the office. But until next time, stay groovy. Oh, hello, Blue. I'm just about to log off because I've just cooked dinner and I'm hungry. You've been listening, Groover. Give this curry a crack and also that carrot soup I made a bit earlier. It's an absolute winner. But I'll see you all again really soon. Thanks for hanging out, everyone. Lovely to see you, Mandy and Deb and Blue. Um, I caught up with Michelle P earlier making the soup. Um, my YouTube son dropped in briefly. Joey popped into the soup as well. So, yeah, thanks, everyone. And um, bon appetit. <laughs>